And now it's time for another edition of What Would Jello Do? Tucker Carlson's fire, Tucker Carlson's fire, Tucker Carlson's fire, Tucker Carlson's fire. Yay, 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 yay. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Everybody was flipper now. Ha, 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 ha. Ho, 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 ho. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, let's enjoy the moment. But then, long term, how much is really going to change? That guy is laughing all the way to the bank like he and Alex Jones and Glenn Beck and Rush Limbaugh were in their nine-figure amounts of salaries and stuff for years and years and years. And who are they going to replace him with? He replaced Bill O'Reilly. Yeah, O'Reilly's horrible, so horrible. Let's replace him with somebody even worse. A little younger, who's kind of like a big eel with a big glob of hair or mop glued on his head. Fine, problem solved. Who do we get now? Steve Bannon? Or how about Lauren Boebert or Marjorie Taylor Greene? Madison Cawthorn's looking for work. Yeah, you know it's going to be somebody even more horrible to keep pushing that lying right-wing extremist fascist agenda. What's really going to change at Fox? What's really going to change the culture of Fox anyway? You know, Rupert Murdoch basically admitted he did all of Trump's lies because he thought it would make more money. Yeah, that's the problem. Right there. He was willing to lose almost $800 million to avoid anybody actually seeing him attempt to complete a sentence in a courtroom. It cost him even real money, but it's insurance. I mean, he's not going to feel that. But this is the point. The only, what, what do you, it's like dysfunctional, long-time loser sports teams. Baseball, football, basketball, hockey, you other kinds of football in other countries, you know there's some that are just basket cases, no matter how many coaches they fire, managers they fire, quarterbacks they fire, general managers they fire for hiring horrible coaches and drafting horrible players, nothing's going to change unless you can fire the owner. Just ask the owner of the racist Washington team who couldn't come up with a better name to change it to than the commanders with boring, ugly art instead of the Washington Red Tail art. They Tails art of for the Tuskegee Airmen they found it before. Yeah. When you can't, even if Rupert Murdoch finally does us a favor and expires, you get Lachlan Murdoch, who's so horrible like his father that the other Murdoch brother didn't even want to be part of Fox News anymore. Yeah. In order to change this culture, you can't really force it on them either. There's a lot more you have to change than just Fox News or just Twitter or anything like that. So you have to go back in time, back in time to those horrible dark days known as the 1930s, the Great Depression, Hitler starting to bubble, bubble, bubble into something that we finally had to go to war with to stop him from exterminating Jews and gays and so many others and in populations of entire countries. And he had a lot of support in the United States, including to some degree with this rabid anti-Semitic Catholic preacher who had a nationwide radio show called Father Coughlin, Father Charles Coughlin. And he was, he got so out of hand, but he was so popular that at one point it was estimated that one quarter of our entire population of this country was tuning into his radio show every week. He was one of the first people to do this kind of stuff. And finally, they had to rein him in. They passed some laws. And after World War II... I thought it was directly because of Coughlin, but they just remembered him later after World War II. Finally, a law was enacted to put a stop to this stuff. It was having even more violent effects on people than Trump amok and Fox and Twitter and Facebook and everything else. Coughlin and that crew were worse. The German-American Bund, the Christian, well, it could be Christian supremacist society of fraud. Because his one, you know, they, it was worse. We don't want that again. So Congress, 1947, I think it was, or 48, passed the Fairness Doctrine. The Fairness Doctrine was the law of the land that said, if you start mouthing off about this issue or this person, then you have to let the other side reply. 
especially if it's a targeted person who has been lied about or smeared, should get a chance to defend themselves. And that was the law decade after decade after decade until Ronald McReagan and that crew seized power. First, they start deregulating corporate mergers and hostile takeovers of businesses so that suddenly these three TV networks who took great pride in having kick-ass news departments that tried to outscoop each other, expose corruption, expose how the Vietnam War wasn't going to be won. You'd see the starving children in the Biafra War where I got my name. All the stuff they've dumbed down and taken out of the news today because those networks got swallowed by, I think it was General NBC. BC got swallowed by General Electric, one of the world's largest arms manufacturers, nuclear power components. I think CBS got swallowed by another defense contractor known as Westinghouse. And ABC got swallowed by a holding company, I think it was called Cap Cities, Capital Cities Industry. And one of the people on the board was Reagan's rogue director of the CIA, the godfather of Contragate and drug running and all that. William Casey. And they then had editorial control over the content of NBC News. And hey, what better place to cut budgets so we can pocket more money than to defund and dumb down the news department and everything. And our news has never been the same. Ben Begdikian had several different editions of a book called The Media Monopoly, which every single edition that came out, less and less people, is down to about half a dozen different entities, controlled almost all the news and the media publishing, book publishing even, in the world. And of course, people got less and less informed, more reactionary, and stupider. Then, finally... The Bush, the second Bush regime, the W regime, was so out of control with war crimes and all kinds of corruption they should still be in prison for to this day. Well, finally there was enough of a blowback that Barack Obama, instead of business as usual Hillary Monster Clinton, got swept into the White House. Things were heady. Even I had some hope and put up a whole long thing on Alternative Tentacles' website about advice on what the new president ought to do. And I wrote it very diplomatically just in case somebody read it. It's probably still up. But one of the things in there, big time, was media reform. We had already seen the rise of Fox. And right after the Fairness Doctrine was abolished, one year later... Rush Limbaugh was all over the country and no one was allowed to reply to his lies. And then it mushroomed and mushroomed and mushroomed with hostile takeover laws, got more and more out of hand with President Bill Clinton once again being the real villain here, not the Republicans, the Telecommunications Act of 1996, which even Bob Dole called corrupt which said, finally, instead of only being able to own one TV station, one newspaper, one of this, one of that in the same town, somebody could just own all of them if they wanted to. It didn't matter anymore. And overnight, these Dallas people, who had a major hand in giving us George W. Bush later, called Clear Channel, not only had all these billboard monopolies, they began swallowing radio station after radio station after radio station. Suddenly, no more local news, no more local content. A long-time, much-beloved station in Oakland that mainly played soul and jazz and funk on the air, swallowed by Clear Channel, nothing but Britney Spears and words piped in from Atlanta, and nothing but right-wing slanted news. They even organized their own pro-Iraq invasion protests in order to cover them on their, let's face it, fake news. And Clear Channel was also gobbling up music promotion companies. They swallowed Bill SFX, who had swallowed Bill Graham Presents, who had also swallowed Feline and Denver, who was extending into everything from Arizona and Texas, ate them all up into Clear Channel Presents, when then some of those Texas guys spun it off into their own company, still run by old W acolytes and stuff, called Live Nation. Yeah. So then back to Obama coming in, one of the things that I, me, myself, and so many other people believe 
or okay. We know how out of hand and out of control people like Limbaugh and Fox and the others have now become and the damage it's doing to the American psyche, especially if you're driving clear across Kansas, no matter where you go on your radio dial, it's all right-wing bigoted blowhards all the time and the music only they would like all the time. Everything else getting blooded out, which is how you create a red state when people don't have access to any more information as their farms are foreclosed, their homes are foreclosed, they can't figure out how to feed their families. Oh, it must be the Mexicans' fault, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, so one of the things that many people besides me were pushing for, okay, now, 19, uh, when am Obama getting, yeah, 2009, huge Democratic majorities, House and Senate, Let's bring back the fairness doctrine. We need it now more than ever. Why didn't it happen? It wasn't because of Republicans. It wasn't even because of Rupert Murdoch or Clear Channel. It was your friend and mine, Nancy Pelosi, once again screwing up the entire thing deliberately, where she just said, oh, media reform, off the table. Her favorite phrase, off the table. I just wish that she and Feinstein were finally off the goddamn table. Even impeaching Trump for more than the little thing in Ukraine the first time that might have actually convicted him, off the table, off the table, off the table. Well, what I am hoping is that now we can have another push. It's time for major, major media reform. This is a public commons. This is all a public commons, including the internet. Remember that? Public ownership, public control. It was Reagan's Federal Communications Commission under, didn't even have all its members who voted for ZIP to abolish the Fairness Doctrine. The Democrats then in Congress passed renewing it, and then President Reagan vetoed the whole thing because they couldn't get the two-thirds majority to override the veto, so no more Fairness Doctrine. Boy, do we need it now. I mean, when it originally was passed, both parties thought it was a great idea to have more, actually let people know both sides of an issue. So what we need now is media reform because of what's happened that we can all see and how it's destroying not just our, ability, our democracy, but people's ability to rise above their animal instincts and quit always wanting to cancel and beat the crap out of and shoot each other and stuff. This is on the cusp. So how about better media? Bring back the fairness doctrine, Biden. Bring back the fairness doctrine. Democrats in Congress, no matter how corporate you are, surely even Joe Manchin could understand that if there's a fairness doctrine, somebody criticizes a coal company for wrecking the planet, that he can go on and defend his coal benefactors. Fairness doctrine. And on top of that, do what Europe and the EU is already doing in cracking down on great big tech companies, you know, never paying any taxes on the sales and, you know, wrecking the public comments there too. There's starting to be laws against that now. Fine. Same with the internet. You know, one of the big platforms starts lying about people. You have to let the other side reply. And it's hard to police everything because of all the stuff out there. But the main ones you can do and de-platform people who do otherwise, that's real easy. And on top of that, isn't it time in the interest of fairness and media reform and a free society that doesn't always want to strangle and cancel anybody who doesn't totally agree with them on the spot, isn't it time we made farce book and Twitter Twatter and Instagram, all the others disclose the algorithms that steer so many people to so much neo-Nazi reactionary shit deliberately.